السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم ما بعد. This is the end of the of, of Jum'a, the day of Friday basically. Hadith uh, we should have actually started that uh, last night in preparation for Jum'a. But at least we, we will always inshallah get the benefit and uh, use it for the next Friday with the Nayah Azza wa Now if, what is the etiquette of Salat al Jum'a or the day of, of Jum'a when you come to the Muslim? How would you find a space or a spot? What is the prime location or prime spot for you on Friday, Khutbah al Jum'a? When you come to the Khutbah al Jum'a, what is the prime spot for you? Okay, closest to the Imam. Closest to the Imam. Well that's in theory, right? What's in application? What is the prime place and spot for people on Jum'a and Jum'a? The wall, that's number one. Anywhere in the masjid, if it was the last يعني, line in the masjid. The wall is the prime position. What else? The closest to the exit. Even if it was next to the shoes and slippers and so on, doesn't matter because you only leave as soon as possible. <coughs> so when you look at these subhanal location, eventually people, they just look differently when it comes to finding spots and spaces. And when they come to the masjid for Salat al Jum'a, they come a little bit late, when the masjid is kind of getting crowded right now. Uh, but they want to <coughs> find a spot on these prime locations, prime spots. They're willing to go and pass through the crowd and even, you know, push people sometimes, you know, raise their feet above their shoulders just to get that spot or at least what they assume an empty space maybe, a gap, so they could fit, fit in. Is that acceptable? Let's see what the Prophet says about this. عن أبي عبد الله سلمان الفارسي رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يغتسل رجل يوم الجمعة مثلا رب الله said if a person takes a bath on Friday when you say taking a bath it also means taking a shower you don't have to and to spend two hours in the bathtub but just take a, taking a shower and taking a shower for Jumma it's recommended highly recommended uh, and it's for every congregational يعني العبادة that you, you make whether it's Eid, if it's something like uh, Salat al-Khusuf, Salat al-Khusuf, when there's congregation, it's better to take a shower so when you come, you come and you smell fresh all the time. So that's the first thing. لا يغتسل رجل يوم الجمعة. So that uh, uh, if you if you person takes a bath or takes a shower on Friday. The question is, when? Is it the night of Friday, which means Thursday at night? Or is it after Fajr? Or is it some time, any time between Fajr time all the way until Maghrib time? When is the best time to take that shower for Yom al <coughs> Before the actual Salat al -Jumma. Basically, if this is the last thing you do before you come to the masjid, that's the best. You take the shower, put your clothes on, you just eventually any uh, perfumes and so forth. And then you come to the masjid. That's the best thing you do. Qala, وَيَتَطَهَّرُ مَا اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْ then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, purifies himself thoroughly. So it's not just taking a shower, also taking care of other things, such as, you know, trimming your mustache, uh, clipping your fingernails, and eventually grooming yourself properly. So when you come to the masjid for Juma, you clean your fresh, and the hair that needs to be removed is already removed, eventually taking care of yourself very, very well for your Juma. Qala, wa yaddahinu min duhnihi. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then he uses oil and perfume. Oil doesn't mean here, yani, uh, olive oil. So it means basically in modern day something such as using a gel for example. Basically taking care of your hair, your beard to the best you, you, that you can. So you groom yourself very well. Then you take, you put some atar, some perfume, you have bukhur, burn in the bukhur and just put it that's suitable for the, for the occasion. Eventually you do that. ثم يخرج none of the most important part for us in this chapter which is the chapter of the etiquette of sitting قال ثم يخرج فلا يفرق بين اثنين he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then uh, sets forth for the masjid does not force, forcibly sits between two persons so you come to the masjid you find an empty space that's where you sit down what if I had a space in the front and it's empty. No one is really taking that space because everybody wants to be in the back row. In this case, yeah, you can come through, but you don't raise your feet above their shoulders. And if you had to, and people are not taking advantage of the front lines, gently you come between them so that you can go through, but without raising your feet above their shoulders. You cannot do that. 
ثم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم one time he saw a man who was coming into the masjid seems to be late because the prophet was already given the khutbah and this man was coming through coming in from the back and he was trying to reach in the front by going over people's shoulders so Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he stopped the khutbah and he turned to him and he says qalat jlis sit down faqad adayt you're hurting the people just sit down now the reason this man was actually coming he perhaps he was looking for the virtue but in the way of reaching that virtue he made mistakes he hurt other people he trying to go forcefully you know between them so the prophet told him just sit down that doesn't mean if you come into the masjid and there's a space in the back where you can make your sunnah of the hayat al masjid, you don't just sit down. That's better that you just make them to make the two rak'ah, make them quickly, and then sit down. So because another man, the Prophet وسلم, he saw him coming in and he sat down. He also interrupted the khutbah and he turned to the man and he told him, Did you pray to, to rak'ah? Qala asalayt rak'atayn. He said, did you, sit, did you pray before you sit down? Qala la ya Rasulullah. He said, No, I did not. Faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qum fasalli rak'atayn. Stand up, pray two rakah, and make them brief. Don't make them too long, just make them quick and then sit down. So if you come and there is enough basically room, you just make your two rakah. But if you just gonna come in and start hurting the people, better sit down in the back, that's even better for you. This person now who comes into the masjid, doesn't <coughs> separate between the two, two people, he finds a space, sits uh, he, uh, and he makes his sunnah. ثُمَّ يُصَلِّ مَا كُتِبَ لَهُ And this person offers a salah that is the salah that is uh, 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 يعني as, as, uh, as many as possible مَا كُتِبَ means he prays as many rak'at as he could and that means sunnah before salat al-jumu'ah How many rak'at do you pray? There is no limited number for how many rak'at you could pray before jumu'ah The Prophet ﷺ says in this hadith ثُمَّ يُصَلِّ مَا كُتِبَ لَهُ means you pray as many rak'at as you can Two, four, six, eight, ten, hundred. That means the earlier you come, the more you will be able to pray. Because you know that the ajr and the reward for Juma is based on now, based on the, the hour when you arrive, right? The Prophet says, Man ja'a whoever arrives in the first early hour, like the early birds who come whenever when no one is still in the masjid, it's, it's empty. This is just equivalent to offer the sacrifice of an entire camp. Then with the one who comes after that, when people start trickling, coming in, as if you're offering now a cap. Then he said a lamb. And then he said a chicken. Then he said an egg. Even an offering of an egg, which means egg can also be considered a sacrifice. And that's referring to that egg to have life. That's the meaning of it. It's a sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the moment the Imam comes on the member, then the Malaika who is standing by the door, writing down the people and who, call, who come in through the doors, they just you know, close their, their, uh, their books, they roll them up, and then they sit down to listen to the Imam. So whoever comes after the Imam is on the member, believe it or not, is Imam. Your car is not punched correctly. And if it does, it's red, red basically any color. Meaning, you're not as if you're not there. That's the, what it means. You're not count among those who came early to Salat al Jum'ah. So try to make it as early as possible. Based on this hadith, when you come early, then you pray as many rakat as you want. Make them two, make them four, make them six. Basically, the, the the purpose of this is to get yourself into the atmosphere and the mood for Salat al Jum'ah, so that all the distraction of the dunya is gone, and now all your focus and your ibadah. So then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Thumma." يُنْسِطُ إِذَا تَكَلَّمَ الْإِمَامِ Then after that, as you finish your salah, the Imam comes on the member. He says then he listens to the Imam silently. So you sit down, you hear the Imam coming on the member, you finish your salah, and you sit down and listen to the Imam. Now your mind is clear. Because you've engaged in long ibadah, and long salah right now. The distraction is gone. So you sit down and you listen to the Imam silently. قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ إِلَّا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ الْجُمْعَةِ الْأُخْرَى the Messenger of Allah says a reward for this, that you you listen to the Imam to the end silently. It means you don't play with your cell phones, you don't you know start drawing you know scenes on the, on the carpet, you don't do all that stuff. Just listen silently to the Imam. Qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
the reward for this, his sins between this Friday and the previous Friday will be forgiven. Accept things that you have between you and other people that needs to bring them forgiveness from them. And also al kabah the major sins. Major sins, they need special talk for them. But the minor sins, the things that sometimes we do and we overlook for our mistakes, if this was done properly, so the sins between these two Fridays will be forgiven. See, Jama'ah, how, how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how many opportunities we have for our sins to be forgiven. Yani, wallahi, <laughs> people should have no excuse to end up in Jahannam. And after this, there are no excuses for people to end up in Jahannam. All what we need is just to make that effort and sort our priorities right. <coughs> Instead of making our priorities to come by the end of the khutbah, so we can leave as early as possible, go back to whatever actually we go to. No, we should come as early as possible. And then we leave as early as possible. We come as early as possible, so we can enjoy, inshallah, this ibadah and have our, our sin forgiven. And then we leave as early as possible. If you want to go and catch up with your work, whatever you go for, that is fine. But sort your priorities right. This one, this happens once a week. Alhamdulillah, you have the Ramadan, which is the annual event. You have the Hajj, which is one life opportunity. And then you have the Salawat daily event. All of these are chances for your sins to be forgiven. Increase your chances by increasing your ibadah. Wallahu ta'ala. Now, any question? Yes. Now, now. good question. If you come into the masjid when they already call in the Adam for Jumu'ah, uh, so should you sit down uh, and listen to the khutbah after the Adam is over? Should you wait standing up until the Mu'addin finishes the Adam? What do you do? Actually, if you come into the masjid while they're still calling the Adam, start with your sunnah, with Tahiyat al masjid Because the khutbah is much more important. So therefore, just start with your salah, finish the two rak'ah, so that you can listen to the khutbah from the beginning if you could. Wallahu Now. Juma, that's true for Juma, of course. Yeah, for other than Juma, you still have the time. Let's say we come to Salat al Dhuhr uh, and they're calling the Adan, just wait until they finish and enjoy basically and also another ibadah which is repeating after the Muaddin. Now, somebody has. Yes. What about the Uh huh. Yes, when you come and the Imam is already on the member, just make them quickly and sit down. Now, Okay, that's the same. Um, the noon time is about like one thirty or something like that. Sometimes uh-huh. we come here before one thirty, no. and so it's, it's not like you know afternoon yet, and that means the zohar didn't even start yet. Mm-hmm. So when we come here, is it okay for us to start sunnah for for, for Juma? Yeah, the question: If noon time begins around let's say one twenty-eight, one twenty-seven, right now, and you come at one o'clock, so are you going to be praying these sunnahs as well? Would that count towards Jummah? At the same time that sometimes we're praying Sunnah and it is the time for that. Yeah, there's a prohibition on praying at the time of noon, or right before noon time. Let's say five, ten minutes before noon time should not be praying anything. Jummah <coughs> is an exemption. So Jummah is exempt, meaning you can pray before noon time for Salat al Jummah. You pray two, four, six, eight, as many rak'at as you want. You can do that. So that's actually, it's not part of the prohibition. And even if it's not the time for Dhuhr, you are actually making the Sunan for Jummah, not for Dhuhr anymore. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu says here. Yusalli ma kutibala. He didn't mention when this person arrived in the midst. He just pray as many like as you can. Yes. After or before? After. Uh huh. Can you um, do it? Yeah, let's say the question is if someone forgets to uh, take care of their hygiene before Juma, let's say you forgot your uh, to flip your finger, uh, this is the fingernails, uh, so you, you remember that, oh, I didn't do that, Allah. And so you're already in the message. <coughs> Should you leave, go home, and then come back again? Well, if there's time to go and do it and then come back again, that's fine. But if you're going to miss Juma, 
or missed the khutbah in the beginning, no, stay in the masjid when you're done, inshallah ta'ala, you could do that afterwards. No. It's not it's not obligatory, it's not obligatory. However, it's highly recommended that if you forgot that and you still have time to go to the house and come clean yourself and then come back again for the Jummah, you should be doing that inshallah ta'ala. No. If you the question if you come late for Juma and they already making the salah and you join the second rakah, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, if you come and you join the second rakah, if you catch the second rakah, you only make up one extra rakah because you caught the salah. But if you miss the second rakah, meaning you arrived when the Imam is already in the sujood of the second rakah, or uh, you came and the Imam is already in the final tashah. In this case, you missed Juma. The Salah it counts when you when you catch one rakah. That's what the Prophet said. <coughs> if you catch one rakah from the Salah, then you caught the Salah. And the Prophet he says that a rukur is when you catch that rakah. That's what counts as one rakah. So if you caught the second rakah, meaning you caught the rukur, you're fine. <coughs> you can add just only one extra rakah for this. But if you miss them both and you came late, you pray the Lord. No, no, you join the Imam, but you make up for it. Wallah. Yes. So, when you're praying Sunnah, do you have to pray an even amount of rakats, or do you do an odd number, and if so, what's the significance? You mean, you mean odd number in terms of... Uh, uh, 4, 6, 8, or 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay. Well, when you do, when you do the Sunnah for Jum'ah, do you make them odd numbers or even numbers? Basically, we make them as many rakats as you, as you want, but in two units. <coughs> units or units of two. So it's, it's basically, it has to be two rakat. But then you want to make them five units of two, seven units of two, or 10 units of two, oh. even number or odd number of units of two, it's up to you. Okay. As much as the time you permit. Allah. No. Yes? Um, if the football has already started, you can skip the <coughs> No, uh, it's better that you pray the two rakat and you sit down. Now, according to Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, you just sit down. According to Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, you just sit down. However, hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is very clear that when this man came in and he sat down, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he stopped the khutbah and he asked the man, did you pray two rakah? He said, no. The Prophet says, okay, stand up and make two rakah. Now, I know that there's an interpretation to this hadith uh, about, you know, the Prophet, he perhaps was trying to show the people the condition of this man. He wants people to look at him and so on. But there are really no evidence whatsoever in the interpretation of hadith from any Sahabi that there was anything unique about this man that the Prophet wanted people to look at. It was just a situation where a man came in, the, sat down, the Prophet told him, pray to Raqqa. Very simple. And I believe that the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and Hadith of Nabi should be actually followed. Allah. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. 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 You can do that. Yes. You can do it as well. No. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala, he used to pray sometimes Salat al-Nafila or Sunnah during the day in units of four. So that's fine. Now, Wallahu a'lam. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashara Allah, alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah, alhamdulillah.